All right, so one of the last things that we have to do in this chapter um, is just talk about some relationships between the uh, Tanabe Sugana diagrams. And so um, the uh, first is that the DN and the D10 minus N diagrams are related. Um, so the D1 and D9 go together, the D2 and the DD8 have some relationships, etc. cetera. Um, and the octahedral and tetrahedral Tanabe Sugana diagrams are also related. What we're going to do now is very quickly derive the D1 and D9 Tanabe Sugana diagrams to understand these relationships. And fortunately, these are the simplest diagrams and are very quick to derive um, as compared to even D2. So we start out with the microstates, right? Um, and so for D1, let's start out with the D1 diagram. Um, we have only uh, 10 microstates here, all can be spin up one electron in any of the five subshells and then all the spin downs. We have m sub l values ranging from negative two to two, so only one electron here, so the lowercase m sub l values are same as the uppercase m sub l values. The lowercase m sub s values spin negative one half, for example, for spin down, the same as the uppercase spin uh, m sub s values. That's our microstate table, 10 microstates total, largest um, m sub l equal two, so l equals two, for l equals two, the largest m sub s is one half, so s equals one half, so the term symbol that for that is, is uh, doublet d, and that actually um, accounts for all the microstates, so there's only the doublet d, everything is doublet d, you can kind of see that, right, all these are going to be doublet d, okay. So 10 microstates, all of them double D. The term symbol double D splits in octahedral environment. How is that going to split? Well, you're going to have the higher energy states where the one electron is in EG orbital. Okay, we don't even have to think about electron-electron repulsion here at all. So it's much simpler. We don't, simpler. We don't have one electron. So this is going to be a doublet EG state. That's how we would call that, right? Because it's a doublet uh, unpaired electron in EG. That's going to have an energy of zero B um, no electron electron repulsion on any of these, plus B, remember, is a, a measure of electron electron repulsion, plus one delta H, because we're, we're in the EG. And EG is a delta H higher than the T2G. Four microstates spin up, spin up, spin down, spin down. Six microstates for the three TG spin up and spin down. Uh, these are the lower energy states. We're going to call this a doublet T2G, because um, that's the term symbol for doublets, right? It just has the same symmetry as the uh, molecular orbital that's in in the T2G. And um, it's going to be zero B, no electron electron repulsion, and no delta H, uh, delta O term either, because it's in the ground state. And so you do, this, do the same type of thing we did for D2 in the last video. You have a doublet D free ion term for the spherical ion. You go to a weak field, so it's going to split into the doublet EG and the doublet TTG. And then you go to strong field, and you're going to have the doublet T2G stay the same, because that's the ground state. There's no delta O term. Uh, but the double EG is going to go up with the slope of delta O, one delta O. Very nice. You're going to have one spin allowed transition. Okay. Um, so that's, that's simple. Now let's do D9. D9 looks very similar. Okay. And so now you just have one hole. Okay. But you can come up with this microstate table. 10 microstates uh, total. Largest m sub l is two, so l equals two. For l equals two, the largest m sub s is one half, so um, s equals one half. Again, that's going to give a double d. Um, but now here's where things get slightly different. What are you going to call um, this term up here? This is the these are the high energy terms. Again, these are um, six microstates. This is where you have um, holes on the T2G. Right? Your, your absence of electron is on, on the T2Gs. There's six different microstates. Uh, these are three of them. The other spin, spin versions are, are there too. Um, but you have four electrons in your EGs, in your three in your EGs. So those are higher, right? The lower ones are going to be when you only have three electrons in the EG um, and you have a hole in the EG. You want the hole in the EG for it to be the ground state. So what do we call this term? What do we give the term symbol? Well, we remember for a hole, it, for doublets, it's where the hole is or where the, the unpaired one electron is. So the hole is in the T2G. So we call this the doublet T2G. So the high energy term is now the doublet T2G. That has an energy of zero B plus one delta O now um, because it has 
four versus three in the EG. And then the lower energy state um, is going to be uh, given the sim term symbol double EG. Why? Because there's a hole in the EG. That's, those are going to be lower energy. There's only four of them because there's these two uh, configurations. And then the other ones with this, the unpaired electrons spin down. That's a total of four microstates. Call that doublet EG. And that has no delta O term because it's a baseline. Remember, um, yeah, so anyway. So the orders are reversed of D1. And so now when we go to split, T2G is going to go up and EG is going to stay the same. Double EG and double T2G is going to go up. So the orders are reversed of D1. And so we just found out this relationship it turns out to be true um, for all these sort of D and D10 minus N pairs in the Tanabe Sagana diagram. Uh, so I'll just read this. The Tanabe Sagana diagram for D10 minus N can be obtained by reversing the order of the sets of the terms for the various T2G EG configurations on the strong field side of the DN diagram and relabeling the propylate electron configurations. So here's an example of D2 and D8. Now I'm just pulling up these two diagrams. Here's D2. So these are the terms that come from the T2G2 um, electron configuration. These are the four terms. And if you look at the D8, you'll notice that these are switched. Okay, so the EG2 terms were at the highest in energy. Now the, the, those sort of same terms, the single A1, single E, triple A2, single 1, A, A1, single E, triple A2, these green terms here, those are now lowest in energy. The purple ones were in the middle, they're still in the middle, and the bottom ones, the ground state energies, were still up high. So it is flipped in this interesting way. Um, just note that within any one of these sets, the ordering can change from going to dn to d10 minus n. All right, now let's think about um, relationships of the tetrahedral tanabe sagana diagrams, how we can use the tanabe sagana diagram um, to analyze tetrahedral complexes. Remember that the tetrahedral energy ordering of the T2 and E sets, we don't have the Gs anymore because there's no inversion in tetrahedral symmetry. That's reversed from that of octahedral. And so we have the T2s, the triply degenerate T2s, higher in energy. There's more direct interaction between the orbitals and the ligands. And uh, the EGs were lower in energy. Oh, sorry, now they're Es, not EGs. Less direct interaction from Es. All right, so we look up the OH, the TD correlation table, and you can see, you know, all of these terms, you just drop the Us and you drop the Gs. Um, there is a little complication here with T1U and T2U. Those change, and A1U and A2U, those change. But we really only care about what? EG going to E and T2G going to T2. Okay. So um, now what we can do is go back to a D1 octahedral uh, Tanabe Sagan diagram, which we derived just earlier in this video. And we got this where we had a doublet T2G ground state and a doublet EG excited state. Now all we're going to do is we're just going to flip the ordering and we're going to drop the Gs. And that's going to get you your tetrahedral Tanabe Sagana diagram. Doublet E, doublet T2. Okay? But now remember, a D10 minus N also did a flip. So if you do a D10 minus N, you flip once. Now you go D10 minus N tetrahedral. You flip back to the DN octahedral. So that gives us very important relationship, which is shown here. The Tanabe Sagana diagram for the tetrahedral DN can be obtained by reversing the order of the sets of the terms for the various T2G EG configurations on the strong field side of the octahedral uh, DN diagram, and then omitting the G substrates, superscripts. Okay? So let's look at the D9 TD diagram. D9 TD diagram is going to be uh, uh, the same. Now I flip the D9 OH. This is going to be the same as the D1 OH, except I drop the Gs. And so that is the beauty of it. Basically, um, let me just write that out so that everybody is so we're very clear on that. Um, so to analyze TD complexes, 
with dn configuration with dn electrons use the d10 minus n tanabe sugana diagram so the default is the tanabe diagram diagrams are designed for octahedral use the d10 uh, uh, 10 minus n tanabe sugana diagram and um, omit the g's Omit the G superscripts. Um, most anomalous diagrams diagrams won't actually show the G's, so you'll have to remember if you are an octahedral to actually include the G's. Last thing to talk about is spin crossover in anomalous diagrams. So remember, D4 through D7 complexes, D4, D5, D6, D7, can be high spin or low spin, and so anomalous diagrams will show. Um, a change of spin that occurs upon, upon this increasing um, uh, uh, ligand field strength. So you can see here, if we look at this diagram, so this is D7, just as an example. So um, let's draw out, okay, we have T2G, so we're thinking about octahedral here, octahedral D7. Let's draw out the low spin and high spin um, versions here. So let's first try to make a uh, low spin. So we're going to pair everything, D7. What's that going to be? That's going to be the doublet, right? One unpaired electron. And now we're going to do high spin. So keep them as unpaired as possible. That's five, six, seven. What's that going to be? Two unpaired electrons. That's quartet. This is quartet. This is doublet. And look at this. Here's the doublet, or here's a quartet. That's this quartet here. That's a high spin case, weak field ligand. So a weak field ligand means you're gonna to want to populate into the EG more easily than pair up and have extra electron electron pulsion in the T2G. And then we have a doublet. That is the strong field case. So once you get to a value of around 22 um, delta O times B in the octahedral system, you're going to be right at the spin crossover point, and you're going to be very close from going to low spin, high spin. But once you're greater than 22 delta, um, in terms of the magnitude of delta O, how do you change this? You change the ligand, okay? Or you change the metal ion, go back to chapter seven things, trends and delta O's, um, then you'll be at this state, okay? You'll be at that ground state. So this is a line here, and I'm going to draw this this is something people get confused with. This is a line. This is one line. This is the delta, this is the double E state, double E G if we're talking octahedral. It came from a doublet G free ion term. So that's one line. If we go to a different color line here, so it's a ground state when it's a high, uh, when it's low spin. When it's uh, a ground state is a high spin complex, of course the doublet G then is excited state. Okay, and this is a line too. Quartet T1 or T1G for octahedral. And then when we got to the low spin, strong field side, that became an excited state, but it came from the quartet 4F. Okay? So it can be a little bit difficult to um, read these diagrams, but you'll get the hang of it and we'll get some practice in the next video.